Hey, what's new at Mount Erie? Well, thank you for joining us today as we begin our School of the Prophets Holy Week Revival. We invite you to join us this afternoon at 4 p.m. for worship in the chapel. Wednesday, March 27th at 6.30 p.m. for worship on Wednesday. March 29th at 12 p.m. for Good Friday service and Sunday, March 31st at 7.30 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. for the Resurrection Sunday celebration services. Invite your family and friends for this powerful week of revival. Join us for an exciting opportunity calling all singers, seasoned or aspiring, to participate in our one day only Resurrection Sunday Kingdom Choir. Rehearsals will be held Saturday, March 30th at 10 a.m. Sign-up slips will be distributed during the service. Simply complete the form and submit it to either Mother Mildred Yard or Choir Director Raquel Britton after service. Stay tuned for rehearsal details. Calling all Kingdom Women. You do not want to miss the 2024 Kingdom Women's Conference. Join us Saturday, April 13th for the KWC Health and Wellness Day. This will be a day filled with workshops, giveaways, entertainment, vendors, and much more. Tickets are $20. Advanced registration is required for this event. Mark your calendar for the Kingdom Women's Conference Luncheon Saturday, April 27th at the Hilton City Avenue at 12 p.m. Dr. Lisa Bowens, Associate Professor of New Testament at Princeton Theological Seminary, will join us as the speaker. Sunday, April 28th, we welcome Mother Sharon Blivens, Jurisdictional Supervisor of the Ohio North First Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction at the 10.45 a.m. official day service. You do not want to miss a single event. Visit the conference committee at the kiosk or scan the QR code to purchase your luncheon and health awareness tickets today. We will see you there. We are excited to announce the Mount Erie Kojic Spirit of Philadelphia Gospel Cruise Fellowship Saturday, June 8th at 11.30 a.m. Tickets are $90 per person. Boarding begins at 11.30 a.m. We leave the port at 12 p.m. sharp. Transportation is available at an additional fee of $5. Space is limited. Purchase your tickets by scanning the QR code on the flyer or contact Deacon Philip Allen for additional details. The Christian Women's Council presents the Community Baby Shower on Saturday, April 20th at 12 p.m. This event is for expectant mothers and mothers of children ages 2 and under. To register, please scan the QR code or contact the church office for additional details. Interested in college? We are collaborating with Harcum College to bring higher education opportunities to you. Qualified candidates can earn an associate's degree in early childhood education, human services, business management, criminal justice, behavioral health, and animal center management. For more information, email Evangelist Michelle Johnson Smith at mjohnson at harcum.edu or Dr. Charlotte Morris at cmorris at harcum.edu. We will continue to stream live on Wednesday evenings and Sunday mornings via YouTube and Facebook Live. Contributions may be made via the church website, www.mountarikojic.com. Via text by texting Mount A to 41444 and during 7.30 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. We thank you for your continued support of the ministry. And remember, there is no place like this place anywhere near this place. So this must be the place because the Lord is in this place.
God glory. You came for your people, Father, and everyone belongs to you. All souls are yours, and we pray for your people today, Father. Lord, that your salvation be met inside the hearts, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we say thank you. 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 We praise your name today, Father. And Lord, we say thank you and thank you and thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, 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 put inference on it, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, hallelujah, we thank you, Minister Randolph Howard uh, for that powerful prayer. We thank you even right now. You know, we were saying hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, ho Hosanna is two words that can go together. They're praise words, they're adoration words. They're words, Hosanna simply means, Lord, save us, save now. Come, Lord, we need your help. That's where we want to enter into this revival, this School of Prophets revival, the help of the Lord to save at least one person, at least one soul. We want a word to go out that will minister to the, peer, I mean the, uh, the people. We pray today, even right now, as the word of our, the prayer have already went up, that this revival, this official day of this School of Prophets revival, make a difference. God bless you. At this time, we, I pray that each of you have a program. We're going to uh, recite our kingdom mandate for ministry, which is coming from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 18 and 19. And if you're able to stand at this time, please do so. And we will be reading it together. Let us begin. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord is truly blessed. At this time, we like to hear from our Kingdom's Men Choir once again. The lift him up. We want to lift him up higher. Amen. Because he, the higher he goes up, the, the more the blessings come down. So also after the uh, congregation of him, we'll have our scripture reading coming from Brother William Roy, followed by the invocation coming from Evangelist Karen Wallace. You can say amen as they all come. Men of every birth, and the next to Jesus gave the key. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift, in, lift the Savior up. Lift the Savior up, still he speaks from eternity. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw all men unto me. Oh, the world is hungry. For the living bread, lift the 
Savior up for them to sing. Trust him and do not doubt the word that he said. I draw all men unto me. Lift him, lift the Savior up. Lift the Savior up. Still we speak from eternity. Exalt the preacher, don't exalt the pew. Preach the gospel, simple, full, and free. Prove him, and you will find that promise true. So lift him up. Just lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw all men unto me. Lift him up by living. As a Christian on, let the world in you the Savior see. Then men will gladly follow him who once thought, I draw all men unto me. So lift him up. Just lift him. Lift him. So lift him up, the Savior, just lift him, lift the Savior up, still he speaks from eternity, he said if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw all men unto me. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. I will be reading from John chapter 12, verse 13. And it says, Took palm branches and went down the road and meet him. They shouted, Praise God, blessings, the one who came into the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Again, that is John 12, 13. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. We say yes to your will. Yes. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, our Father, our God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you to say thank you. 
We thank you for another day's journey. We bless your name for blessing us. Oh God, we come to thank you on today. Not for any good thing that we have done, but we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your long suffering. We thank you for your patience. We thank you, Jesus. We come to bless your name on today. For you are an amazing God. You're an on-time God. You're a providing God. You're a way-making God. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. You are a saver. And we thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we come to honor you on today, for you are worthy of the glory, and we come to tell you thank you right now. Oh, God, as we bow our heads in humble submission, we ask for forgiveness right now in the name of Jesus. We acknowledge that we have sinned, and we have come short of your glory. Lord, we don't want our prayers to be hindered, but we want them to be a sweet-smelling savor in your nostrils right now. Purge us with hyssop, and we will be white as snow. We want you to have your way, oh God. We come to be revived. We come to be revived. Revive us again, Lord. Oh Lord, we need your touch on today. Help us, Jesus. We thank you for being in your house for one more service. We didn't have to do it, but oh God, you did. And your word said that where two or three are gathered together in your name, you promised to be in our midst. So we thank Thank you for being in our midst on tonight. We want you to have your way. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Look on every speaker today. Hide them behind the cross. Let your word come forth with miracle signs and wonders. We thank you, Jesus. Look on our listening audience. Those in the sanctuary. Those on the live stream. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand. And oh, Lord, we thank you very much for what you have done. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for turning things around, oh God, in the lives of your people. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, Lord. And we say yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this revival. We thank you for our pastor, Bishop J. Lewis Felton, a man after your own heart. Continue to bless him. Continue to encourage him in the name of Jesus and let some drops fall on Lady Priscilla Felton and touch Raquel dear God we pray Lord look on our founder dear God and Mother Winifred Morris bless everyone under the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus thank you for how you've been with us through this Lenten season oh God and we bless you on today we honor you on today in the name of Jesus and so God be in everything that's said and done look on those who are sick, those who are on their bed of affliction. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord our God that healeth thee. And with your stripes, Lord, with your stripes, Lord, with your stripes, Lord, we claim healing on today. Let the weak say I'm strong in the name of Jesus. Look on, oh God, those that are going through the valley of the shadow of death. Comfort, dear God, we pray. You said you'd have to leave us for a little while, but you send the comforter who will guide who will lead who will comfort her so do what you do best oh god in the lives of your people i pray for my co-workers oh god in the school of the prophets bind us together as one in the name of Jesus that you would be glorified that you would be edified and that the devil would be horrified we bind up everything that's not like you on today give us listening ears oh God to hear what thus saith the Lord and we thank you and we tell you thank you come on don't pity pat the Lord give him praise on today give him glory on today for you deserve the glory for when we look back over our lives and and when we think things over, yes, Lord, it was you huh, that brought us through. Huh, and we come to thank you right now. Huh, and we eat candy on the masha, huh, And we give your name the praise. Huh, for the Lord hath done great things huh, for all of us on tonight. Huh, whereof we are glad. Huh, and my soul say, yes, Lord. Huh, my soul say, yes, Lord. Huh, our soul say, yes, Lord. Huh, we delight to do your will. Yes, Lord. Huh, thank you for changing our minds. Huh, you said to let this mind be in you, huh, which was also in 
in Christ Jesus. So we thank you for the mindset, the mindset to do your will, the mindset to run on to see what the end will be. In Jesus' name we do pray. We believe God. We believe God. We believe God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. standing yes while you're yet standing we'd like to invite Dr. Sierra Lewis to Dr. Dr. Deaconess Sierra Lewis to give us our affirmation of faith and then we'll have our welcome uh, by Elder Anthony R. Davis please come in that order Good afternoon. We will be reciting the affirmation of faith, which can be found on the back of your bulletin. We affirm our faith in the Bible. We affirm our faith in God. We affirm our faith in the blessed hope. We believe in the blessed hope, which is the of the God, which is the We affirm our faith in repentance and salvation. We We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We believe that the work of Christ on the cross We affirm our faith in the Holy Ghost. We believe that the Holy Spirit, We affirm our faith in sanctification altogether. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. Praise the Lord. As you take your seats, come on, let's give God some praise in the house today. Praise the Lord. Are there any guests in the house this afternoon? Praise the Lord. We're going to ask that you stand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. On behalf of our pastor, uh, Bishop Dr. J. Lewis Felton, we and First Lady and basically the members of Mount Airy Church of God in Christ wish to welcome you this afternoon. We're so glad that you've chosen to be in this place because there is no place like this place. So this must be the place this afternoon because the spirit of the Lord is dwelling in this place. And we just want you just to sit back and enjoy. We have a treat for you on this afternoon. We just want you to just enjoy the word of God. We come to be revived on today. Uh, we praise thee, O Lord, for the son of thy love, for Jesus who died and now gone above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, today. Revive us again. Welcome. Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe we have three or four visitors that stand, maybe five, one, two, three, and one in the back. Can we have one of you to give a welcome and response? Hi, my name is Shatika. Um, I'm a mother of 11, just recently moved from Florida, trying to get, you know, closer to the Lord, trying to bring my children closer to the Lord. And... I'm a little shy. I don't know what to say, but I just want to get closer to God, and that's it. That's, you know, that's it. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, just lift up the mighty name of Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. Had it not been for God who was on our side, and where would it be? The fact that we are here in this fashion, it means that surely the presence of the Lord is here. And that's enough to give him praise. Can somebody just glorify God in the house today? The word of God declares when the praises go up, then the blessing will come down. But well, we're about to change it. I don't know what desire you have today. It's in, your it's in your praise. I don't know why you are here, but it's wrapped up in your praise. So you release a praise and you receive your desire as long as it's godly. Come on, somebody glorify God. Thank you, Brother Solomon, and thank you, my sister and your family, as well as all the other uh, guests who are here today. The book of John, chapter 1, verses 29 says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. We'd like to welcome our praise dancer today, Evangelist Cheryl Mitchell, as she minister in song and in dance.
God bless you, Evangelist Cheryl Mitchell, for that rendition, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. At this time, let us welcome our senior pastor, Bishop J. Lewis Felton, our servant leader. Amen. Thank you, Overseer Macon. You may be seated. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Uh, we thank God for this wonderful attendance that we have. Uh, there is almost 150 years in this part of our campus and this chapel is a historical building. Isn't this a beautiful place? Uh, we thank God for our chapel and uh, we thank God for Proximity. Amen. It may not be a word that you are used to, but just say it anyhow. Proximity. Yeah. Amen. And so uh, I need to uh, do just a little unfinished business. Uh, Minister Howard D. Randolph II, if you will come forward. Amen. Come on up. And uh, a few months ago, we were over in Israel together, not knowing uh, what the enemy was planning. Uh, but uh, wherever I went, I put this man in front of me. <laughs> and didn't nobody bother me. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, this is one of the biggest men in the Church of God in Christ, as far as that's concerned. And so we thank God for him. So I just want to read the record. Church of God in Christ Incorporated World Headquarters, Memphis, Tennessee, USA, Bishop C.H. Mason, founder, minister's license. Amen. So what better time than this School of the Prophets revival than, uh, you know, in the South, the old folk didn't care much about the King's English. And so uh, what they would say, you is really official. <laughs> and said, know all by uh, these presents that Brother Howard D. Randolph II, a member of the Mount Airy Church, has acknowledged the call of the Lord to the gospel ministry he is hereby presented this certificate as evidence of our acceptance of his testimony. He is recognized as a member of the clergy of the Mount Every Church of God in Christ. He is recorded as a student in training. He is to serve in the congregation of which he is a member under the tutelage of his pastor and shall lead a godly life with all piety. He must be enrolled in the training institute endorsed by the jurisdiction and in concert with the general requirements of the general church. Uh, so uh, let me just say there are six bishops whose name is on this certificate. Bishop J. Drew Sheard, presiding bishop. Bishop J. W. Macklin, first assistant presiding bishop. Bishop Lawrence M. Wooten, second assistant presiding bishop. Bishop J. Hawley Lyles, Jr., general secretary. Bishop Ernest C. Morris, jurisdictional bishop. Overseer Wendell Robbins, jurisdictional secretary. Bishop J. Lewis Felton, pastor. So, and then in addition to that, amen, you have your official card from the Church of God in Christ. I want to put this in your hands because as the folk in the South said, you is officially. 
Congratulations. Y'all want to hug him? Go ahead. I ain't got no problem with that. You're going to get the biggest hug you ever had in your life. Amen. He came through the ranks, led us out in prayer today. And we thank God for Minister Howard D. Randolph II. Amen. Now, uh, I believe in order to have a second, you got to have a first. Is that right? So, so there is a Howard D. Randolph Sr. Uh-huh. And there's a third, right? Well, look at here. The Trinity is all up in this place. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Randolph. And, of course, we thank God for all of our guests. Now, uh, Sister, uh, what was your name that said you want to get closer to God and you have 11 children? Uh, what, what's your name? Satika? Uh-huh. Yeah. I did not shake your hand this morning. They were, all right. Well, I tell you, 11 children will help you to get closer to God. <laughs> you a mighty woman, so I want to shake your hand before you leave today. Cause it's been a long time since I've seen. Yeah. I hear you. And so what church you a member of? All right. Well, let me just sing you a little bit of this song while you're thinking about it. The doors of the church are open. Come on in. Well, the doors of the church. Come on in. Oh, Jesus has outstretched hand. You must be born again. You have a standing invitation. Come on in. Oh, the doors of the church are open. Come on in. Yeah, the doors of the church. Come on in. Jesus has outstretched the hand. We're going to take you in now. Where's our secretary? The doors of the church are open. Come on in. Oh, Jesus has outstretched a hand. You must be born again. You have a standing. Come on. Now, you can sit right there on the front seat, you and your wonderful family. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's just breathe a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this family. We knew we needed this revival. You told us when to have it and where to put it. And even before the sermon has been preached, hearts have already been touched. We want to thank you for these children. We want to thank you for this mother. For you said, welcome little children into the kingdom, for of such is the kingdom of God. And I just want you to repeat these words with me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I love you. I love you. And I thank you. And I thank you, Father God. For loving me. For loving me. So much. So much. That you died. That you died. For my sins. For my sins. And you rose. And you rose from the dead. To save me. To save me. My faith. My faith. In the name of Jesus. I'm saved. Come on, help up a bush. Thank you. Thank you for the children. Thank you for the family. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We give God glory. Hallelujah. It's all right to praise him. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. 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 Thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the spirit. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for love. Hallelujah! 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 Glory! Well, we can give him 30 seconds. I know we can. Well, I know we can give him 30 seconds. We can give him 30 seconds. We can give him 30 seconds. Come on, put your hand together. Let's give him some glory. saving business he's still in the healing business he's still in the delivering business he's still in the blessing business hallelujah well one thing about praise the power of praise can shift the atmosphere and when God shifts the atmosphere, that's when his glory comes down. And the atmosphere becomes your environment. And since the Holy Ghost has shifted the atmosphere, we ought to just give him another hand clap of praise. He's shifted the atmosphere. And so I don't feel I don't feel the offering at this time. I feel like she said, I want to get closer to God. I want to feel his spirit. I want to be fed. I want the word in my life. I want the power of God over my soul. So 
We're getting ready for dinner. The table is spread. The feast of the Lord. Are you hungry? Come on, touch somebody and tell them, let's eat. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Feed me. Feed my soul. Feed my faith. Feed my future. Feed my purpose. I'm hungry. Let us stand to receive. The woman who is not only a survivor, but she's more than a conqueror. Missionary, evangelist, Michelle Pugh, and after her, the men are going to give God a song and then we're going to shift gears and evangelist Carolyn Vernetta McCray from Eastern Pennsylvania. Come on, this is a double header. Let's give God some praise. God bless you, evangelist Pew. Let's keep praising of God. Let's keep praising his name. I thank God because as she came, what dropped in my spirit, I saw her sister. I don't know what their relationship is, but I, I just started thinking, Sister Yard, that this is answer to a mother's prayer that somebody was thank God that it came to fruition because even on this morning pastor you talked about we may not see it in our lifetime but for her family member to be able to see her come in all I can say is God I thank you God I thank you God I thank you God I thank you Heavenly Father we thank you for this day God I thank you for the space time and opportunity Holy Ghost you are already in the room God so we say thank you God Father have your way Jesus do what you want to do God Father hide me behind the cross God Father let me not say or do anything that you have not given me to do God Father I pray that you would bless the word God even before it goes forth God and bless these your people God Father take away anything God that's not like you God and we will always give you all glory all honor and all praise clap your hands and say hallelujah 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 thank you thank you thank you pastor I tell you my spirit is bubbling and I apologize in advance for what might happen up in here tonight. So I'm going to very quickly, I don't want to waste a lot of time, but I just want to quickly say thank you to Pastor and First Lady. I thank you for this opportunity, for this space and this time. As I stand before you, as Pastor said, I stand before you as a survivor. And you are going to hear the testimony that I have that God has done it, that only God can do it. That's what Evangelist Renee Winston says, only God can do it. And how many of you know that's not just a cliche, but that is actually fact. So our word from tonight is going to come to you from Matthew chapter 21, verses 8 through 10 in the New King James Version. Matthew 21, verses 8 through 10. And it reads as thus, and a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? Would you please help me preach my message tonight? My title is, who is this? Who is this? You may be seated. On any given Sunday, on any social media platform, you can find what we call, Pastor, church debates going on. The saints can be seen discussing the latest scandal or fall from grace from a, a well-known pastor, or they might be debating about what we should do, we as the church, and how we should handle our transgender and homosexual brothers and sisters. They're arguing and they're fighting about, do we welcome them in or do we turn them away from our churches? Still, we have others who are still involved in that age-old debate 
over whether or not God has called women to preach. But how many of you know that while we're fighting over positions and arguing over things that don't really matter, there is a world out there that is dying and lost and needs to know who Jesus is. As we examine our text, we find Jesus just five days away from his destiny with the cross. During this time, the city of Jerusalem is overflowing with people. They've come from all over. They've come from cities near and far to participate in the Passover celebration. There are all sorts of people, those that were a part of the ministry, those that came out of tradition and habit, those who had been followers of Christ and had heard of his teachings and his miracles. There were some that even came just to show off their latest fashions. Yet there was a small group who had not known who Jesus was. So as Jesus rides through the crowd, the question comes up, who is this? Who is this Jesus that everyone is talking about? As I was preparing, I started thinking about the crowd, the crowd. Because the Bible tells us that everywhere that Jesus went, crowds followed him. Some of them wanted to be healed, but some of them just wanted to see what in the world is going on. So they had heard about this man, Jesus. Someone said, have you heard about the man Jesus? People are saying that he might be the Messiah. You know the one that the Old Testament prophets had prophesied about. Others say, nah, he's just a prophet. Then someone in the crowd spots Jesus out and they say, haven't you heard? He's the one that they said that raised Lazarus from the dead. And as Jesus is walking through, the crowd begins to yell, Hosanna, Hosanna. The problem is not everybody knows who Jesus is. So someone says, well, who is this? Who is this person that everybody is talking about? Romans 10 and 14 in the New Living Translation says it to it this way. How can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? Saints of God, it is our responsibility to tell the world who Jesus is. In just a few days from now, our churches are going to be very much similar to that scene in the text. Our churches are going to be filled with capacity. People are going to be coming from all over. Some of them are going to be coming broken. Some of them will be coming because they need to be healed. Still others will be coming just because they want to know, as my sister say, more about Jesus. So who is this Jesus? I can hear somebody in the crowd say, he's a friend like no other. Can I get a witness? Luke chapter 5 verses 18 and 20 says, tells us a story about the man who was paralyzed and confined to his bed. And the story goes that Jesus is in town and he's running at a revival. And this man and his friends, they've decided we need to get our friend to Jesus because he's in need of a miracle. So they go to where Jesus is, is meeting. And I thought in my mind, I was thinking it was probably one of those little storefront churches because the Bible tells me that the crowd was so great that they could not get through the crowd. But they had what I like to call pastor, a Malcolm X mentality, by any means necessary. And the Bible tells me that they take the tiles off the roof and they lower their friend right at the feet of Jesus. I came to tell you, Michelle, I came to tell you, Sonia, and I came to tell the church, you better get yourself some friends like that. Some real friends, the kind of friends that when you're hurting and in need, they won't take you to the bar or to the club, but they will take you to Jesus. Yeah. Proverbs 18 and 24 says, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. In Luke 22 and 31, Jesus tells his friend Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. In other words, Satan is out to get you and destroy you. But I, Jesus, have prayed for you. Everybody needs a friend like Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you. I remember I said I, I was trying to debate over whether or not to add this in, Pastor. But I thank God for real friends in this season of adversity, Sister Yard. Pastor has, the Lord has exposed who my real friends are. So, 
while I was on my bed of affliction, and I will tell you a little more and a little later, I couldn't do anything. And my friends, Sierra and her mother, Michelle King and my other friends, they got together, Mom Barb, and they called a Zoom meeting, and they were praying for me. Here I was, sick in my bed, didn't know if I was going to live or die, and they were crying out to Jesus on my behalf. And I said, God, I thank you for real friends, the kind of friends that will talk behind your back, but they're talking about you to Jesus. And so I say to you today, turn to your neighbor and ask him, are you my friend? Will you talk about me to Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So who is Jesus? I believe, I believe that the woman at the well would say he's the master recycler. Our pastor told us on Wednesday that he was a fixer-upper God, that he can take things that are dirty, things that are useless, and turn it into something beautiful. The couple from the wedding at Cana would say he's a miracle worker who can make something out of nothing. The 5,000 men plus women and children that Jesus fed with the two loaves and fish would say he's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. The woman caught in the act of adultery, she would say he's a loving and forgiving God who won't hold your past against you. First John 1 and 9 says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Mary and Martha would say, he's an on-time God. He may not come when you want him, but he will always be on time. I can hear Lazarus say, I'm a witness that there's nothing, no thing, no situation, no diagnosis that's too hard for God. Oh my Lord, every day won't be easy and you might have to go through some things, through some tests and some trials. But my Bible tells me, God, in Psalms 34 and 19, the Lord tried to warn us. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. First Peter 4 and 12 says, beloved, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal which is taking place to test you and to test the quality of your faith as though something strange or unusual was happening to you, God. Bad things happen to good people, but guess what? God will come see about you. I was looking in my message and I found something, Pastor, about the Witness Protection Program. And it says, Witness Protection is a security provided to a threatened person who can provide testimony in a case. And Witness Protection is offered to defendants and other clients before, during, and after trials. And usually, the witness protection takes place by the hands of police. But how many of you know that Jesus has his own witness protection agents? Well, who are they? Psalms 23 and 6, call them by their names. Goodness and mercy, they shall follow me all the days of my life. So who is this Jesus? He is the one who will always fight and win on our behalf. As I take my seat, Psalm uh, Revelations chapter 12 tells us that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. So I believe I will testify why I have a chance. So back in June of this past year, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer and I lay in my bed. Mother, I didn't know if I would live or die. So all I could do was call out to God. And I started thinking for my sister that wants to get close to God. The 
only way to get close to God is to spend time with them. You know when you first meet somebody and you're interested in them, in order to get to know them and see what they're all about, you got to spend time with them. Spend time with Jesus on your knees. Spend time with Jesus in prayer. So as I laid in my bed, all I could do was cry. And the Lord kept ringing in my ear, Pastor. The Holy Ghost kept saying, don't let what you see make you forget what I said. So I said, well, God, what did you say? And I started to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said that I could come in your name, God, and ask anything, God, and it shall be done. Father, you said that healing was the children's bread. God, you said that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you would deliver Michelle from the law. And because I know that you are not a man and you cannot and you will not lie, God, I stand on your word that by your stripes I am healed. I am healed. Oh God, as I take my seat, the testimony is this. A few weeks ago, Pastor, I went to the doctor because they thought they saw new areas of cancer and they gave me a biopsy in my neck and the doctor came back and said, the two lymph nodes that we found were not cancer, but Bishop Davis, that ain't even the real blessing. They said that what they saw in my pelvic area was just inflammation and swelling, but that ain't the blessing. Then he said, the areas where they had been treating me for cancer, all they could see is the treatment. There's no cancer. There's no lesions. Oh, God. So who is Jesus? He's my healer. He's my way maker. He's my deliverer. So what will your testimony be when they ask you, who is Jesus? Or just before you do that song God is a good God Yes he is Oh God is a good God Oh God is a good God Yes he is. I know God is a good God He's a mighty mighty good God Yes He's a mighty mighty good God Yes he is Yes he is Yes, he is. 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 Oh, God is a good God. Yes, he is. God is a good God. I know God is a good God. Oh, God is a good God. Come on and clap your hands and give God praise for the word. Hallelujah.
I serve a risen Savior in this world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. I see his hands of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives. I serve a risen Savior in this world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. I see his hands of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives. He, he lives in my Jesus lives. Jesus lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along this narrow way. Yes, Jesus lives. Jesus lives. Christ Jesus lives today. You ask me how I know he lives. I serve a risen Savior in this world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hands of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my, he lives within my heart. He lives with me. He lives within my heart. Hallelujah. I serve a risen Savior. Hallelujah. He lives within my heart. Hallelujah. He lives within my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. For this day, now, Bishop and First Lady, we thank you for this opportunity. Hallelujah, the school of the prophet to come before you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I won't be before you long. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We all have come through some things, some trials and some tribulations. Hallelujah. We all been healed and delivered and set free. My testimony real quick is that I had one, they removed my thyroids. I have no thyroid in my body. They had cancer cells in them but I didn't have to have treatment it was I so I praise God for that they told me that I probably wouldn't be able to sing I wouldn't be able to talk above a whisper but to God be the glory hallelujah to God be the glory hallelujah I on Friday I had some injections done in the back of my neck but to God be the glory <laughs> Hallelujah. I had hand surgery a few months ago, but to God be the glory. Hallelujah. And I believe in going to the doctor. I believe in science and medicine because I know that God can move through those doctors. He can heal through those doctors. And I was on the table on Friday and I said, wait a minute. We got to pray. And they took a minute and they said, what's she doing? They said, she's praying. Amen. Pray over your doctors before they let them touch you. Pray over the doctor when you go into the hospital. Pray over, even if it's just a daily you routine, you go in here and you pray. Hallelujah. I'll be coming from Zechariah 9 and 9. Hallelujah. And you're hearing. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh to thee, unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon a donkey and upon a colt. The fall of a donkey. Matthews 21, 1 through 11. And when Jesus drew nigh unto Jerusalem and will come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus to disciple, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find a donkey tied and a colt with her and loose with her, loose them and bring them unto me. And if any may say un aught unto you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And straightway he will send them all this way, done that it might be fulfilled, which was exposed by the prophet saying, tell ye the daughters of Zion, behold, the king is coming unto thee, meek and sitting upon a donkey and a colt, the foal of a donkey. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And very great a multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strew them in the way. 
and the multitude that went before and that followed crying, saying, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Is this the multitude? Said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Amen. You may have your seats again. Jesus' triumphant mandate into Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Before we journey into Jerusalem, I'm a little nosy sometimes. I want to see some things. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And beginning, he went into the, before he went into the road, beginning at Corponia, he is passing through Para and Jericho and ending at Bethany and Bethphage, where he was entered Jerusalem as his final days approached. I wanted to know what happened the days prior to his entry into Jerusalem. Let's take a quick journey on the days before Palm Sunday. I think it's important in how Jesus spent these days still doing ministry, knowing his days ahead were going to be the last days. His triumph entry, Palm Sunday, Jesus was actively ministering and engaging in significant events. Six days before Passover, Jesus arrived in Bethany where Lazarus lived and died. Where Jesus resurrected Lazarus after four days from being dead before Palm Sunday. Jesus has spent a great time in Bethany. Mary Magdalene anointed Jesus' feet with portions of pure nard a costly ointment. This act was significant and is part of the events leading up to Palm Sunday. It's also known that Judah Iscariot, one of the 12, betrayed it, Jesus. Also leading up to Palm Sunday, Jesus tirelessly ministered to the people. He healed the blind. He cured 10 leopards. He shared a meal with Zechariah, the tax collector, and he taught the good, about the good shepherd. He continued to reveal to his reveal, I'm sorry, to his disciples that he would cru will be crucified. All this going on was planned as a great parade, he, his triumph and mandate entry. Into Jerusalem, the stage is set. He had to go, he had to lay the foundation of what was to come next to his two disciples. He sent specific instructions on what type of animal he needed for his momentous entry and the words was out that Jesus was coming and they prepared themselves with palms and shouted Hosanna waving and laying them on the ground because the crowd believed that Jesus was the Messiah the long-awaited deliverer promised in Jer Jer promised in Jewish scripture, Jesus had less than a week to live before he dies. He has set the house in order. Let's remember, this was the same crowd who wanted to crucify our Lord days later. Jesus was coming on a donkey, and the people were excited about what was happening. Next, but he came and changed the atmosphere. He didn't come riding on a stallion, Clydesdale, a Bentley, a Cadillac, a BMW, or even a Maserati, even my little old GMC. He came with a message riding on a donkey. He was not coming to destroy the Romans, but rather to deal with the issues of sin in our lives and the problems of the present world, he had the future in his mind. The palm branches were, a, were symbolized the victory, the triumph, and the joy. During Jesus' entry to fulfill the prophecy the, from the book of Zechariah 9 and 9, it was a peaceful entry and his significance, I'm sorry, satisfied the message of reconciliation and salvation 
His arrival in peace rather than war wagging kings arriving on the donkey on Palm Sunday reminds us that Jesus' willingness to face trials, crucifixion, and ultimately raise from the dead to save us from sin. Let's imagine Jerusalem and all its hills, all around it, and you were on the right hill. Hallelujah. And you see Jesus on his donkey, close up and personal. What would you do? How would you get Jesus' attention? Because you knew that, know that this is the only time people were declared, that he had allowed the people to declare him king of kings. How would you call Jesus if you was riding past you? You know how we are at the football field and the basketball court and we calling out the per person that we like the most? But I can imagine, again, he's coming around those hills. He's coming down. And you guys been to Jerusalem, so I, I can only imagine how then I would say, Hey, Jesus! Jesus! Hey, it's me, Jesus. Would you do that? Hallelujah. I would say, it's me, it's Net Net. Hallelujah, it's Junior. Hallelujah, it's Carol over here, Jesus over here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he, and he looks over at you. He looks over at you. What you going to do? What you going to do? You going to cast all your cares, all your worries at his feet? Hallelujah. As he's coming down, hallelujah, round in the hills, hallelujah. And the, the Pharisees, the, the people, excuse me, the leaders who were there, you know, those people that were sitting inside and didn't want Jesus to do, they, they talked about him and they was plotting and all that stuff. Hallelujah. He wanted Jesus to rebuke the crowd and send them home. Hallelujah. To shut them up and just stop praising him. But he said, this is words, if I tell the people to be quiet, hallelujah, for a moment, for a moment, the very rocks of the ground will cry out, hallelujah, he is the, the son of God. Even the animals knew who Jesus was. Think about it for a moment, what happened when he got on the donkey. He who had never been written had become submissive to the will of God. Palm Sunday is the making of a triumph entry. And Jesus into Jerusalem one week before his resurrection. Matthews 21 and 11, my sister read that. As Jesus entered in the holy city, nearing his de declination of a long journey towards Golgotha, he had come to save the lost, Luke 19 and 10, and this was the time and the place to secure that salvation. This significant triumph and mandate entry into Jerusalem reminds us that each Christian has desire has a desire most of us have endured the cross. Amen. Endure the cross. Repentance has a long suffering effect. We live in humility of the cross so that Christ's love and power may flow in and through us. Amen. Some of you already have taken your, your palms home. Hallelujah. You've already made your crosses, but if you haven't done that, when you get home, hallelujah, the palms that they give us today, we wave them in two different directions. We wave them back and forth, for hallelujah. So on today, when you wave your palms and back and forth, hallelujah, you wave the pulling in blessings. You wave in hope, hallelujah, of increased faith, prosperity and love, prosperity and peace, joy and happiness, meekness and temperance, long-suffering and healing for our nation, healing of the country, healing for the city, healing for our leaders, healing for our churches. Hallelujah. When you wave in the wave them, hallelujah, you speak over your household, you speak over your loved ones. In the name of Jesus, walk through your house, you wave your palms, and it's just a symbolic signal, signal. hallelujah, it's symbolic, hallelujah, but we know when you open up your mouth, and you speak to the Lord as you wave. He hears your prayers. He hears your 
moaning. He sees your groanings. He sees your tears. And you just wave them. Even if you made a cross already, you just wave it through your house. Go up from the third floor to the basement. Go around your house. Speak life. Speak health. Speak strength. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chunk. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. And when you wave them the other direction, hallelujah, 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 you wave away the devil. You wave away the di diseases, uh, hurt, hurt, hallelujah, pain and disappointment, depression, murder, killing, destruction, famine, hallelujah, the killing in our streets, uh, killing in our schools, uh, hallelujah, you wave away those things, uh, hallelujah, the devil is defeated, uh, and God be exalted, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah, Blessed is the king that cometh uh, in the name of the Lord. You are the one God, God has sent. Hallelujah. He, this is, was truly the mandate uh, and the perfect will of God. Jesus was the curse, course that was prophesied uh, that will lead us to redemption. Hallelujah. Let me read that again. Uh, hallelujah. Jesus uh, was the course that was prophesied that will lead us to redemption. Hallelujah. 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 Remember this, hallelujah, this moment. As we approach Friday, Good Friday, and Resurrection Sunday, I'm going to lose some of you. Hallelujah. It is not about the Easter. It's not about the bunny. It's not about dying eggs. It's not about going Easter, honey. Hallelujah. It's about Jesus, the Son of God, the soon coming King, your Lord of Lords, your Savior. You need to teach your children. It's going to be all right. They'll get over over it hallelujah but if it starts with us we it starts with the parents because sometimes i hear parents say oh they just children oh it's okay no it's not hallelujah you are teaching against the resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ Hallelujah. So you get in your mindset. You start today. Hallelujah. I will no longer take my children to these Easter egg hunts. It's paganist. Hallelujah. Our pastor preach about it all the time. Hallelujah. Bring your children to church. Bring them to Sunday school. That's where you want to do the hunt. Come hunt the word of God. 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 Put it into them. Hunt the word of God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Palm Sunday, when Jesus went to Jerusalem, he was going to the cross to be crucified. And he had you in mind. He had me in mind. Hallelujah. Loved ones in mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a risen Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember, we serve a risen Savior. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. He is the risen king. Hallelujah. Continue to keep me in your prayers and we give God the glory. Remember, come hunt the word of God. 730, 1045, Wednesday night. Hallelujah. Because this is where the Lord is. This is where the word of God is going on. And we're being taught. Hallelujah. My pastor, when he was going today, I said, oh, some of, some of this is what you preach today. Hallelujah. And you have to have the heart of your pastor. He's our spiritual father, so when he's teaching and as you should continue to minister, you should see yourself. You should hear your pastor in you. Hallelujah. So remember to teach your children. Hallelujah. Not even just the children and adults. Come hunt the word of God. Come hunt the word of God. Come hunt the word of God. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Continue to wave your palms. Hallelujah. Through your household. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's give God praise. Uh, two wonderful blockbuster messages. Uh, now, what, what artist was that? Was that MC Hammer? They said, don't hurt him. Yeah, well, she hurt him today. But she let that hammer down. Ooh, my God. She hurt him. 
All right. You don't need no music. Put your hand together. Just praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The door is open. The door is open. It's all right to praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Well, let me tell you, brothers, I thank God for the spirit of this fellowship. Look at all these men. And, and when, these, when these two women of God were speaking, they got with them. That's where it's supposed to be. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Come on, touch somebody. Let's start a rumor. Let's start a rumor. Touch somebody. Tell them we are one. Tell somebody else we are one. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Come on, give God another hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Right, thank you, Evangelist Carol and Vernetta McRae. Thank you, Evangelist Michelle Pugh. Didn't they bless us today? Amen. And so, how you doing, Deacon Brown? You all right? Deacon Kimball? Y'all mind coming just a little closer to me? Yeah. Yeah, give these deacons a hand. They can. Hello, Deacon Chapman. Come on up a little closer. We're going to pray, and then we're going to give you an opportunity to plant a seed. Because we're expecting a harvest. Amen? I know it might sound a little funny, but help me say, we're expecting a harvest. And it's all right to just rub your belly and say, expecting. Yeah. You can be a man and be expecting. Didn't y'all know God will make a man pregnant? Didn't y'all know that? You need me to prove it to you in the Bible? Oh, yeah, you already know that, huh? Because Psalm 1 said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that does what? Gets pregnant. Bringeth forth. You can't bring forth if you ain't pregnant. You got to have a seed in you. And when God puts a seed in you, God will bring it forth. Not only will it bring it forth, but out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Come on, rub your belly again and say, I'm expecting. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today because we live a life of expectancy. We walk by faith and not by sight. We thank you that already you're opening the windows of heaven and pouring us out blessings. We don't have room to receive. This church is one that came through the ringer, came through the pandemic the enemy thought he had us knocked down and knocked out. But I hear praise all up in the rafters, compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. You brought us back from the brink. You are restoring us, multiplying us, adding unto the church daily such as should be saved. We thank you for the mother today that came forward with her children. Thank you, Jesus, for souls. There may be somebody else who's willing to say, yes, Lord. Let me hear somebody say, yes, Lord. And God, we thank you that your word has been planted within our spirits. And since you planted it within us, prosper it, fertilize it, mature it, 
and then give us a harvest beyond our wildest dreams because you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Thank you that there's power in us and it's working and we give you the praise. Come on, let's praise God in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now this is going to be an a cappello offering. Y'all know what that means, don't you? Yeah, a cappello means the musician had to leave early. But there's music in my soul. And so we do have the card reader. I know some of us don't carry cash, and that's not a bad idea. Amen. Let us... Stand, the ushers will direct us as we come from the rear and bring our gifts unto the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. God bless Thank you, the Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. You've been so good. You've been so kind to us, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord. We're expecting the miracle on today, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Lord, you continue to stretch out your mighty hand and you touch us, dear Lord. Dear Lord, and we just standing on the tiptoes of expectancy, seeing a new thing in our lives. Even in our own ministry, dear Heavenly Father, a mighty move of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm expecting. Praise his name. Anticipating the move of God. The move of God. I'm expecting. Anticipating the move of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for your touch, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Every word that God sends out has a purpose and a target. God never aims without hitting his target. My word never goes out and returns void. We have no doubt in our mind that the Word of God today has reached its target, which means that you will never be the same again. Thank you for worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ with us today in spirit and in truth. May you continue to allow the power of God to saturate every aspect of your life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that you have given us the victory and made us more than conquerors through him that loved us. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.